Well, hey, Sats here. I hope you're doing really well. Welcome to the service today at C3 Reflect. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit subscribe. And if you're not yet on our mailing list, head to c3reflect.church slash connect. You can jump on board and uh, we can let you know all the cool stuff that is happening. And there is plenty of cool stuff happening. We go to weekly services on Sunday, the 8th of January, 2023, um, across both of our locations in the Docklands and Balham. Get the date in your diaries and, uh, it's an exciting time for sure. We are in week six of our Dream Builder series and we've been talking about building dreams. And we've been talking about how, you know, God has designed every person to find their home, their, their true north in the local church. You get planted in the house of God and it's a place that you get encouraged, you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you get challenged and developed. And, and uh, But ultimately from that place, every single one of us is supposed to be sent out, released into our purpose. Sometimes people just go after purpose and they kind of abandon this sense of community. Hey, I don't need to be, uh, you know, I don't need to go to church to be a Christian. Well, that's not quite right because the church is an integral part of God's design but just as equally sometimes people get just stuck and lost in the church they never go out and build the things and accomplish the things that God has laid for them on their heart and so being a mature Christian in this series we've been talking about having both of those things taking place that we're planted in the house of God but we're also um, you know going out into the world and we're building uh, great things for Jesus and um, you know we've been sharing our vision for 2024 and you can go to c3reflect.church slash dreambuilders to see how you can play your part in that vision. We talk a lot about where we are financially and a lot of details. So you can go check all of that out and watch that back um, there. And uh, But really our prayer is that this series would catapult you into your destiny, into your future, that you would be full of confidence and you would find uh, that, that you are uh, fulfilling the purpose that is on your life. And uh, life is too short to waste any moment. So today we are talking about imposter syndrome and uh, just a really cool uh, I don't know if you know what imposter syndrome is but it's basically the idea that when we succeed in life or we reach a certain place we kind of feel like we don't belong there and so uh, this is kind of like the human condition right like all of us can probably think of moments where we find ourselves in a place where we think oh, I shouldn't really be here am I really the right person and no matter how much we succeed or no matter how great we become that like, we still feel like oh, I just don't know if I deserve this and it's a really interesting topic for us um, as Christians because actually what's really fascinating about Christianity is Christianity is so intricately linked to this idea of identity. You know, uh, it's not just a set of rules. Uh, it's not just another faith, another religion, uh, another way of thinking about the world. Now, becoming a Christian is actually about becoming in Christ is about becoming a new nature. So I want to read you this passage of scripture from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 11. This is uh, Peter who we read about hanging out with Jesus. He's sharing his revelations later on in life. And this is what it says in verse 3. His divine power has granted to us all things, which is pretty good, that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he's granted us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature. So this is the whole point of what he's saying. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire, for this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, with virtue, with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for if these qualities are yours and are increasing they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ for whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins therefore brothers be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election for if you practice these qualities you will never fall that's a great promise right there for in this way there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our lord and savior jesus christ so uh, i love that just verse in verse 4 where it talks about that you may become partakers of the divine nature okay so this is what happens when we accept jesus into our life we die to the old self and we are resurrected, we follow him to the cross and our new self, our new being is resurrected. And this, this nature is new. 
Uh, the Bible says that the old has gone and the new has come. And uh, that's the process uh, that we symbolize and recognize and celebrate with baptism, going under the water, coming out. And, and, and that's the process of becoming a Christian. Uh, and so it's not just an idea. There is a transformation that takes place uh, on, on the inside of who you are in your spirit, you become a new being. Uh, but what's really cool is, is, is that actually in verse 3, right at the start, it says his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. In other words, God has already given us this new nature. His power. Now, this is not a result of us being awesome. This is not a result of, uh, you know, how hard we've worked. We haven't done anything that could accomplish or achieve this. This is the grace and the goodness and the generous, loving nature of God that his power has enabled us and given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. What does that mean? What is it? What does it mean to be godly? To be godly is to be like God. And so his divine power has given us access, has granted us already that we would share in and experience this new nature that is like God. Now, we were made in the image of God. We, of course, are not God, uh, but we are now sharing in this new nature that we see in the person of Jesus. And uh, I've got to just address something really important, which is perhaps your imposter syndrome, which is the feeling that is like, Hey, if I've been given all things, if I'm living in this brand new, amazing nature, why don't I feel a bit more different? Or maybe you might be thinking, I feel like there would be some things that are practically different in my life. Because if you're like me, there are things that are frustrating me. Uh, there are things that are, you know, uh, just difficulties in my life. There are tensions, there are pressures, there are weights. And sometimes we look around, don't we? We say, God, I'm, I'm reading this. I'm seeing that you've given me all of these things and yet, it doesn't feel like I'm experiencing it. And I want, I'm going to address that later on in the message. But first of all, I just want to point your eyes towards Jesus. You see, Jesus is a hero. Jesus is, 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 is the legend. Jesus is, is the model of this brand new nature. Uh, the Bible talks about how Jesus is like the second Adam. He's the first fruits of kind of like a new humanity, 2.0, this redeemed version without sin. And, and, and we're looking to him and we're being formed in his image, but we have already received this divine nature. So Peter's saying here, yeah, you need to add this, you need to do this, you need to confirm your election, you need to, you need to build upon what you've been given, you need to affirm these things, but, but it is something that has already begun. And this is really important for you to understand, that you have already been given a new nature in Christ. Regardless of how you feel, this is your reality right now. You are new in Christ. You know, we, we're not forgiven because we feel like we're forgiven. Uh, we're not forgiven, uh, we're not cleansed because we feel like we're cleansed. No, we receive all of these things because of His divine power. In fact, it's got nothing to do with you at all. It's got nothing to do with how you feel. It's got nothing to do with where you've been. It's got nothing to do with your history, your present, your future, and everything to do with Jesus Christ. He has made a way. God himself, God the Son, second member of the Trinity, has come in the form of a man, fully man, fully divine, and has uh, gone to the cross and dealt with the fall, the issue of sin um, in our world, which has been corrupting us. And so every worldview has to answer for this idea of, of the corruption that we see in our world. You know, um, evolutionists, uh, they say, hey, everything's a product of, of, of positive mutation. Everything's been shifting upwards. Well, I don't know about you, but when I look around me, I don't see any positive mutation. All the mutation is trending downwards. The world is getting worse when you leave it alone. And uh, I don't see that people are, are, are just kind of evolving into, into a new thing. That, that, you know, everything, when you see mutation, sickness is mutation. Uh, when things change in the body, it trends downwards. And society left alone will trend downwards. It's because of sin. And so every worldview has to answer, has to have an explanation. Uh, for, for what's going on. And so Jesus came to earth, that the kingdom of God came. He brought the whole kingdom of God. You see, it's like the earth was under darkness, was under a dark kingdom. And, and, and because of that, sin is running rife. We've rebelled against God. We've rejected God. And so Jesus comes and he brings the kingdom of God to, to, to restore his perfect rule, his perfect goodness for our lives. And so this is so interesting, right? Because every time we see Jesus in the scripture, Jesus is, is bringing the kingdom of God. 
And so somebody's sick and what happens? Jesus reaches out, he heals them. Uh, people are, are lost and, and frustrated and fearful. What does Jesus do? He brings calm in the storm. He brings peace. Uh, people have got all sorts of problems. What does Jesus do? Every single environment where there is a darkness, there is a sin, there is a corruption, there is a pain, Jesus heals. When people don't know who they are, he brings his love, his grace, his kindness. Every time we read through scripture, we see this embodied divine nature in the person of Jesus Christ, God the Son. And you and I today, listen, I need to encourage you today. You and I have already been given access to all things. His divine power has given us this divine nature that you and I might take a hold of it. See, Jesus, Jesus embodies two really interesting qualities. One, that he is powerful. There's nothing that is too difficult for him. Every environment we, we read, sickness, etc., he just comes and he changes. I don't know about you, but when I look around at my life, there are a lot of things that feel more powerful than I am. A lot of challenges that feel greater than I am. But the Bible says the spirit that is in us is greater than the spirit of this world. And Jesus demonstrated that wherever he went, the spirit of God in him was more powerful. And so he had authority over sickness. He had authority over sin. He had authority over confusion and over fear. And he brought the kingdom of God. But, 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 but Jesus is not just powerful. He's also good. Because I think sometimes as Christians, when we hear people talking about how we're supposed to be powerful, it can feel like a bit of a negative, like a bit of a worry. It can feel a bit weird. But, 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 but Jesus, the power of Jesus is balanced with the goodness of Jesus. The power of God is balanced with the goodness of God, meaning that, that God doesn't use his power for his own gain. He doesn't use his power to fulfill his own needs and his greed. You know, as, as man does, we use our power. And so whenever you see people who are more powerful than they are righteous or good, we see that it's, it's bad. It's bad for society when there are people in authority, when there are people with positions of power, but they're not good and society breaks down. But in Jesus, we see that the, the, the very attributes of God himself, the, the power of God and the goodness of God. And I believe that God actually wants us to share in both of those qualities that we would be powerful because here's the thing you need to understand is that to stand up to darkness requires power. To stand up against evil requires strength. And if you and I do not have a revelation of who we are and the power that we have on the inside of us, we're going to find that we are powerless to actually touch and continue the, the ministry of Jesus Christ, to be his hands and feet in the world. You see, the reason you are on the world right now, the reason the church exists is because the church is the light, it's a lamp that is shining brightly against the darkness, pushing back the, the, all of the the the, the evil in this world. The church is the answer. And you and I, we are God's purpose and plan to bring about transformation in our world. But we can only do it if we get a revelation of who we are. We are supposed to be partakers of his divine nature. You know, when I look at Jesus, Jesus just seems to operate in a different way. And we would be tempted to explain it away and say, well, Jesus is God. So, you know, and yes, Jesus is God. But when we look through Act, we see Peter and John, the guys writing this right here. We see them going to pray in the temple in, in, in Acts, and there's a guy who's lame on the floor and can't walk, and he's looking for money. And they just say to him, hey, we don't have money, but we can give you something else. And they take him by the hand, and they pull him to his feet. Can you, can you imagine doing that? <laughs> lift him to his feet and his, his, his legs are healed. And he begins to praise God. We see the whole way through the New Testament, we see the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit at work in Christians because to become a Christian is to partake in the divine nature. So let's talk about maybe why we don't see that. And let's talk about the feelings that we all have when we hear that, which is like, that's a really nice idea, but it just feels like that's not my reality right now. Well, I want to help you uh, out today to explain actually uh, what is happening. You see, uh, God has already given us all things, all things in the spiritual realm. Okay, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we will experience all things in the practical, in the physical. There is a process of getting the things that are here to be here. Jesus has already died on the cross. He's already given you 
his spirit. He's, he's, he's given us everything. God is not holding back from us today. And so we can fall into the trap of thinking, oh, I just need to do these things and I just need to, but it's like, no, 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 everything's done. It's, it's final. It is finished, said Jesus on the cross. But there is some sort of process and knowledge that we need to understand about how to bring things from the spiritual world, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, how those things enter into our reality. And the thing is, is that this is actually what we're called to do. This is actually what we're supposed to do. And so we're looking around thinking, gosh, it just feels different. There's like a dampening, a, a discouragement around us that whenever we try to throw off limitation and, and, and work against the darkness that we see in our world, it's like we're struggling. Well, that's because there is an enemy in this world who wants us to not realize the latent capacity that you have within you. Um, I, uh, I went to Norway a few months ago to hang out with some friends, uh, preach at their church. And uh, I was landing in the airport and my friend Ruben, he, he texted me, he says, hey, I'm outside in a white Tesla. And and uh, I've never, never been in a Tesla. So I just text him back. I was like, oh, just a bit of a shame. It's not the red Ferrari, but it's all good. Why did you give up? And uh, we're getting this Tesla. And uh, I don't know if you've ever been in a Tesla, but this was like a brand new experience for me. Um, you're on the road and you press a button and uh, there's like a big screen in the middle and it's clocking. It's aware of everything that's happening on the road. So lorries coming out, it can see. And you can press a button and the car will drive itself. Now, legally, I believe you're not supposed to do this for very long. Uh, I don't know what the rules are, but we stay within the rules, in case you're wondering. But the sensation of, of, of the car driving itself, it was crazy. I was like, oh. <laughs> it was just like so intense. And then you've got like the acceleration. Oh my gosh, because there's no gears. I mean, even an automatic, you know, normal car has got gears, you just don't see them. And so one, two, three to four, it's kind of like building up gradually. But, but the Tesla, it's just, it's just pure power. You put the, the, your foot to the pedal and it just goes so freaking fast. It was quite disconcerting actually. And, uh, but but the, the sense of power. And this is, this is what I feel like uh, maybe we need to take from that today to help us understand we've been given a new nature. And yet it looks like a car. It feels like a car. Everything's the same, you know? It's got all the ingredients, it's got seats, it's got a steering wheel, you can play music and all of this stuff. Everything is like we've, we, it used to be. But we actually have power. We have the ability to do things that we couldn't do before. Uh, the Bible says in, in, in uh, John, it says that the Holy Spirit will come. Jesus is talking to his disciples saying the Holy Spirit will come in Acts, which we've now received. And the Spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. He will tell you things that you don't know. He'll tell you things about the future. In other words, we have access to power that we didn't realize that we had. And I just see some of us living our Christian life as like, we've got, we got a Vauxhall Sephira, so it's, it's fairly, you know, <laughs> there's not a lot of power going on in that car. And, and, and coming back home and getting in my car, it was like, oh man, this is so slow. I haven't been in the Tesla. And I see some of us, it's like, we're just getting into the wrong car. We're getting into the wrong, we're just, we're just living our life like we're just the same as everybody else. We're just getting on with it and maybe we try and do good and maybe we pray sometimes and maybe, but we're not living in the power that God has for us. And I want to prophesy over you today that God wants you to become a powerful human being. God wants you to be both powerful and good. Why? Because you are the hope of the world. You are part of the church of Jesus Christ and He wants you to shine. Don't hide under a bucket. You're called to be a city on a hill. Why? So that we would push back the kingdom of darkness and bring healing and bring deliverance and bring freedom and bring peace and bring provision that we would come against every evil, every corruption, would come against every debt, every limitation that you and I are part of the answer in Jesus Christ. His kingdom come. His will be done. It's not something we earn. It's not something we're awesome. It, we are partaking by the grace of God in a brand new nature. And Jesus says this in John 4, verse 35. says, do not, use, do, do not say there are yet four months and then comes the harvest. Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. 
Now, he says this just after quite a famous passage of scripture where Jesus is talking to a woman at the well. And uh, I won't tell the whole story, but you can look it up in John uh, 4. And uh, he goes and uh, the disciples go off to get some food. Jesus is having a drink at the well. Um, or actually a woman comes and he says, hey, will you, will you get me a drink? From the well which was unusual because normally you wouldn't talk to women back then and uh so there's straight away a bit interesting and they they start this conversation and 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 kind of out of the blue jesus says hey go get your husband i, I want you to imagine that you're in like your local supermarket your local coffee shop and you just had a bit of small talk and then jesus says go get your husband and the woman says well actually i don't i don't really I don't really have, have one. And, and Jesus says, well, you're right. Because the person you're living with, you, you've had five husbands. You've been around the block. This is Jesus in small talk in a local coffee shop in our context, around the well. And, and she, she realizes that he's a prophet. <laughs> he's God. And str this whole thing blows up. She goes into the town. She tells everybody. She knew quite a lot of guys. In the town, uh, this, you need to come and meet this person. And they all come out. And people get saved and have this encounter with Jesus. And the disciples come back with food. And they're trying to get food to Jesus. And Jesus is like, you know, I'm feeling pretty good right now. I don't know if I'm hungry because I'm, I'm seeing people getting restored and getting set free. And they're, they're, they're like a bit confused about what's happening. And he says this, he says, don't you understand that the harvest is already ready? It's already here. But the key to experiencing it, see, let me prophesy over you right now. You've already got a divine nature. You're already new in Christ. But the key to experiencing it, you're already full of the power of the Holy Spirit. But the key to experiencing it, you see, we're all full of the Holy Spirit, but are we all living like we read in the Bible? Of course not. Why? Because there is a difference between the latent capacity that we have and actually the manifest power. He says, I want you to lift up your eyes and see. Lift up your eyes to the spiritual realm and bring things into today's reality. You see, Jesus has a word of knowledge for this woman. I don't recommend that this becomes a strategy of small talk where we just say really like rude things. Uh, and, and if it wasn't a word of knowledge, it would have been completely wrong and inappropriate and, and rude. But, but, but Jesus saw something in that moment where he saw something about this woman. And therefore he used it as a tool to open this woman's heart. It was a supernatural moment that if that, that word of knowledge had not been there, it would have been a totally useless conversation. And no one would have got saved and the woman would have just been annoyed and gone off. But because it was true, because Jesus had seen in the spiritual realm that that power was manifest and touched touched that woman and had an encounter uh, we see uh, where Jesus goes into the synagogue and there's a guy with a withered hand and and there's a guy with a disability now I don't want to be crass but but if I was if I was that guy and I there was something wrong with my body I would be kind of just a bit self-conscious and and I would be kind of maybe hiding my arm or something and Jesus you know what Jesus says to this guy he says stretch out your hand I mean, is this not potentially the most awkward, rude thing you can say to somebody who has a disability? If someone's in a wheelchair, you're like, get out. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but that's something I've never said <laughs> to anyone, and I hope. <laughs> I, but, but Jesus sees something in the spiritual realm. Why? Because he's got a divine nature. He's lifted up his eyes and he's accessing the power of the Holy Spirit, the Tesla, the power of God. In that moment, the man stretches out his hand and he's healed. You know, if he hadn't been healed, I mean, it would have been a terrible story. Just Jesus being cruel to people with disabilities. I mean, it's not a good look for, for a rabbi. It's not a good look for a church leader. It's a, but, but because Jesus saw something, he says, stretch out your hand and he's healed. So for you and I today, perhaps the gap between what we have already in Christ, in this new nature, and what we actually tangibly experience in the manifest power of God, perhaps the gap is our ability to see. Our ability to see who we are and our ability to see in the realm of the kingdom of God 
what God is doing, what his will is, and what he intends. You see, it's one thing to pray, let your will be done. It's another thing to let your life align where we are doing the will of God. Let me tell you that it is the will of God to heal you. It is the will of God to bless you. It is the will of God to strengthen you. Everything good is found in the kingdom of God. We need to break the lie of the enemy that we're supposed to live this life that is weak and powerless and and struggling and difficult. And yes, there is suffering in this world. And yes, there are problems in this world. And yes, there are challenges in this world. But you need to understand that you have the spirit of God on the inside of you. And every bit of damp pressure that you feel on your life that is limiting your life. I believe right now that God wants to bring freedom into your world. That that pressure is there so that the, 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 the anointing of God would break the yoke of the enemy. You see, life is not going to be perfect, but you need to know that you have power to overcome. You are more than a conqueror. And if we can begin to lift up our eyes and see, we're going to tap into the power of God. There's a difference between the, the, the having something, the latent capability and actually experiencing it. You know, when we look at the Old Testament, we see this so clearly. You know, there's the whole story about how the high priest would go into the most holy of holies in the temple and they would tie a rope to his foot. Once a year, he'd offer a sacrifice for the atonement of the sins of the people. And uh, it's kind of like a type of Jesus, a prophetic. This is what Jesus, of course, has done. He's offered himself as a sacrifice, a perfect sacrifice. But back then, every year, they would have to bring a sacrifice um, for the atonement of the people. And then we'd tie a rope to his ankle so that if he got into that place and there was some sin or something, uh, and in case he died in the presence of God, because the presence of God, the manifest presence of God is so powerful so they could pull him out afterwards because no one could go and get him <laughs> because it was so intense. There's, there's stories in the Bible where the Ark of the Covenant, which housed the presence of God, was being transported from one place to another and someone just reaches out their hand to steady it so it doesn't fall off and the person dies. I mean, these stories are in the Bible, but they're there to show us that God is holy and God is full of power. Now, we all know as Christians that we have got the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. We've got the same power that raised Jesus from the grave, but there is a difference between having it and experiencing it when the presence of God becomes manifest. And I believe, church, what we need to do, if we want to see people get saved, we want to see people get healed, and and not just those kind of grand things, but in our world, in business, in the workplace, with our colleagues in our conversation in the dreams in our heart that we're talking about building we need to begin to lift our eyes and see what God is doing and bring the power of God into our every day every day so so let's talk about how we do that Um, how to pray with power okay it's prayer this is how we do it how do we see how do we lift up our eyes we pray but I believe there's a difference between praying without power and praying with power so I want to talk about how to pray with power power because prayer is the key lifting up our eyes and seeing and praying that's that's how we bring the power of God to become a reality in our world but it's possible to pray sort of ineffective prayers I mean Peter talks about how you can be ineffective and fruitful in the knowledge of God and so it's possible for us to pray nice prayers that are good prayers they're quaint prayers they're they're, they're, there's nothing wrong with them it's just they may not unlock power in your life and I believe to take hold of, to partake in this divine nature, we need to learn how to pray in a way that unlocks power, that is powerful. And so uh, let's, let's walk through it um, now. Um, you know, uh, let me just say this, this is gonna take some time. This is not gonna be a quick prayer. So when we come to God and we just lift up some requests before the start of the day, like that's great, do that, but, 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 but there's not enough time for the spiritual realm, the kingdom of God to fall Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So that's what's taking place in our prayer time. We lift up our eyes and we're seeing a spiritual reality and then we bring it into today. That's what happens. That takes a bit of time. That's not going to happen in five minutes. I'm telling you, if you talk to any person who's really into praying, any person you can think of who is powerful and moving in the spirit, it's 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 going to take more than five minutes. So we need to be, we need to be aware of that. If we want to take a hold of the divine nature, there is going to be a sacrifice. There are going to be some things that we're going to say, I don't have time for that. And uh, we still want to be healthy and fun and have hobbies and rest and all these sort of things. So we don't need to go intense or weird or anything like that. But, But just need to understand that there are some sacrifices to your free time. There's some sacrifices to how much entertainment 
are you gonna pump into your brain? How much time are you gonna spend on your phone? Why, because at what time are you gonna get up? What time are you gonna go to bed? Why, because, because it takes time to unlock the power of God. So the first thing we kinda wanna do is, we wanna, or the first tool, let's say, that we can use to help us pray powerfully is to pray in tongues. It's pray in the spirit. Okay, so if you don't know what praying in tongues is, it's a gift from the Holy Spirit where we begin to talk and we're saying things that don't make sense. They're not in English. And there's examples in scripture and I've even seen in my own life where people have prayed and they're praying in different languages that we know. I was in a prayer meeting where someone was praying, an, uh, you know, English speaker praying in French. And there was a French speaker in the room saying, you're praying in French and didn't know any French. So, so that's cool. But, but also there's praying in tongues just for the edification um, of you. And, and, and Paul says this in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I encourage you to read it if you don't yet uh, pray in tongues. Or maybe you just, um, you know, this isn't maybe a priority for you. You know, you just think, oh, it's kind of a nice thing, but is this, does this really do anything? Well, Paul says this in a chapter 14 when we get there. Um, so he says this, he says, pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. For one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to men, but to God. For no one understands him, but he utters mysteries in the spirit. Okay, so remember, we're talking about lifting our eyes and seeing what's taking place in the spiritual realm. So we're uttering, when we're praying in tongues, we are praying about stuff that we don't fully understand in the spiritual realm. So it's an act of faith for us to pray in the spirit. Uh, on the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people for their upbuilding, encouragement and consolation. The one who speaks in a tongue builds up himself. Okay, so we're creating like an atmosphere in our life where we're strengthening our inner man. We're strengthening our spirit and it gives us, starts to give us the ability to begin to see, makes us more spiritually sensitive. Um, so, uh, you know, the one who speaks in tongues builds himself, the one who prophesies builds up the church. Now I want all, you all to speak in tongues, but even more to prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues, unless someone interprets so that the church may be built up. So Paul's just addressing some practicals. Obviously, if I'm praying in tongues, it's great for me, but it's not really great for you. So uh, in the public space, prophecy is better because we can prophesy and encourage one another. But notice that prophecy is also seeing something in the spiritual realm and speaking it out. It's the same, it's like a very similar gift. One, we're speaking in utterances of the spirit that are building us up. And the other one is us prophesying. And really prophesying is praying powerfully. When you think about it, prophesying is how we bring things down from the spiritual realm into our reality. And so Paul's like, hey, I want you to pray in tongues. And I want you to prophesy. And so we need to become a church that is praying in tongues. If you do not yet pray in tongues, let me just tell you how to do it really quickly. You can, you can pick it up right now. There are gifts of the spirit uh, that the Bible talks about, loads of them. Uh, the gift of healing, uh, the gift of faith, uh, the gift of tongues, the gift of administration. There's, there's loads and loads of gifts, right? And um, you, you, you know, the, the thing is, is that just because you're not gifted in something doesn't mean you can't do it. Because I think sometimes a blockage is like, oh, well, I'm not, really, I'm not really great at that, therefore I can't do it. But let me give you a better analogy um, of something very practical, and that is singing. Now, singing is elongated speech. So if you can say something out loud, uh, if you can say that out loud and elongate it, uh, you're now singing. Uh, you may not think it's very good singing, um, but you can do that. Everybody can sing. Now, some people are gifted at singing. They got great voices and they train and develop their voice as well. It doesn't just happen automatically. And we would go, oh, they're a gifted singer. You know, so when we say to someone, we, you can't sing, it's not true they can sing, they just can't sing as well as people are gifted. So it's the same with the gift of praying in tongues. You, you might not be the best person at praying in tongues, which is why sometimes when you hear some people, they just sing the same thing. They've got like two or three words, they just repeat, shabadaba, shabadaba. And you're like, oh my gosh, like what's, well, this is weird. And uh, let me be honest, it is weird. Praying in tongues is weird, but you're uttering mysteries in the spirit. So if you understood it, it, it would be strange. It makes sense that it doesn't make sense. Uh, and so you may not be gifted in tongues, but you, you can do it. You have access. The way you pray in tongues is a decision. You open your mouth and you begin to make noise. That is literally it. And a lot of people don't pray in tongues because they think, oh, I'm making it up or I'm doing something wrong, but it is an act of faith. You begin doing it. And if you don't do that, I wanna encourage you to start right now, 
wherever you are, or maybe wait till you get home or something like that and begin to practice this gift of speaking in tongues. Why? Because you're gonna build up your inner man. You're gonna strengthen, you're charging the Tesla. Guys, if that Tesla is not charged, there's, there's not going anywhere. It needs to get charged up. And you need to get charged up. You need to get filled with the Spirit, present continuous, filled with the Holy Spirit. You'd be filled again. Maybe you've been filled with the Holy Spirit 10 years ago, five years ago, when you were a teenager, but you need to get filled with the Spirit every single day that you would be full of the power of God. Jesus is walking around. He's not walking around on empty. And when we read in the Gospels, he's not feeling a bit dry. Jesus is full of the power of the Holy Spirit. So when the opportunity comes, he's ready. The harvest is already there. Jesus is ready for it. Let me just suggest to you right now that there are opportunities in your life. There are, are, are people who are going to get saved. There are, are miracles that are waiting to take place, but you need to get charged so that you are ready for what is coming. Otherwise, you will miss the moment. You won't see it and you'll just walk through and think, well, I'm just living pretty much an ordinary life, but I go to church and I pray sometimes. No, you have got a divine nature and you need to, you need to put that thing on and charge yourself up. you be full of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to pray in tongues. It's a discipline. And it, again, it's not going to ha happen in five minutes, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And you've got to develop uh, some spiritual stamina uh, so that you can do that. Uh, you've got to worship, uh, thanksgiving, surrender, repentance. I read you another scripture in James um, chapter 4, verse 6 to uh, 10. Let's see if we can uh, find that. It's one of the small books. So we've got to get in there. And uh, OK, here's what it says. James chapter 4, verse 6 to 10. It says this, uh, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Why? Because you'll be powerful. Uh, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Uh, be wretched, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Okay. So God wants to exalt you. God wants you to be full of the power of the Holy Spirit. But there's a process. Uh, we need to repent of our sin. That's really important. And we're, as we're praying to God, God, I'm, I'm sorry. And we're just taking stock of just where our heart's been and where our thoughts have been. And say, God, and, and we give all those things to God and we, and we let forgiveness flow into our lives. And, and, and then what should happen is as we go through that process of repentance, thanksgiving should start to rise in us. Because this is all by the grace of God. And so, again, if we're only there for five minutes, we might have time for Thanksgiving to rise. But Thanksgiving, you start to think, wow, thank you, Jesus. I'm forgiven. I'm, I'm free. I'm cleansed. I'm whole. And then you become aware of, of, of the realities and you, and you start to read and meditate on the word of God. And you start to get an understanding of who you are and what God's done for you. Well, Thanksgiving begins to rise. Think, oh, my gosh, I'm so thankful. God, I'm, I'm thank you for the Tesla. God, I was over there in my Vauxhall, but, but I'm, I'm grateful. I got a new nature. And so faith begins to rise. And so we're going to make sure we're reading the word of God and we're going to make sure we're allowing worship and we're surrendering our hearts. And so this is what keeps us in check, right? That we're not just, um, you know, we're not just naming and claiming. Uh, this isn't prosperity gospel. I just, whatever I want, I want this new thing. I want a job promotion. Like, like you need to understand that the principle works of God exalting you, it works. But, but first we're gonna make sure in our, in our heart that we're actually surrendered to God. So God, I, I wanna live for you. God, I want your will to be done. So we're spending time in worship, we're spending time in thanksgiving. And so that when power fills our life, righteousness is also there. That we're not just powerful, but rotten on the inside. And the only thing that we want are things that are gonna benefit us. But instead, sure, God is gonna bless us, but we're also a blessing in our world. And so we can live our life full of the power of God to bless everywhere we go. We're elevating other people. Uh, we're championing other people. Our, our prayer life changes from just praying for me to praying for other people. Uh, why? Because it takes more than five minutes. And if you linger, this, this whole process is probably going to take an hour, half an hour minimum, and about half, but an hour, probably an hour every single day. We're gonna, we're gonna, and we're going to make moves, right? So if you're sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know how I get there. Well, just start where you are. Just start where you are and begin to uh, build this habit and this, uh, you know, nurture uh, your inner man. Uh, we're going to invite the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we're, in, we're inviting you. We're welcoming you. And finally, we've not even got really to, to, to where, where, where we start to do business, 
the business of prayer. The final thing we need to do is we need to speak to the mountain. So everything leading up to that point has been just building us up, getting filled, getting surrendered, getting strengthened, but we have not yet changed anything apart from in ourselves. We've changed, but we've not changed anything in our world. Now, Jesus says this in Mark 11. Um, he talks about, I won't read it for time, but he talks about speaking to the mountain. He says, if you, if you speak to that mountain, say move, it will be moved. If you need to believe that you've already received it when you ask, and then it will be done for you. Okay, so this is where we can get into dangerous territory, where we're just going around thinking that whatever we say will happen. It's, it's not quite right. And this is where Christianity can be a bit self-centered. I just want all of these things. I want a million pounds. And I think that's not quite like the goal, is it? You know, <laughs> even though we're totally where the goal was to bless us. Um, Jesus is saying, when you see something in the spiritual realm, when you become aware of my kingdom, when you become aware of the will of God and you allow the power of God to fill your life, when you speak in alignment with the will of God, you're gonna find that there is power and it will shift something in the spiritual realm that will affect what actually happens in today. So we see this with Jesus. You know, he's got a word of knowledge. He sees something and he says it and bam, Every time he heal, heals someone, he, 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 it's like he can see, oh, the kingdom of God. This is what, this is what God wants to do. This is what I want to do. I want to, I want to heal this person. And, and so the will of God aligned with us and our yes and our amen becomes powerful and we begin to prophesy. We're going to prophesy at home. We don't need to prophesy over people. We're just prophesying at home. And so this week I've been sending out some voice memos to people. Why? Because I've been praying for them. And I'm just saying, hey, I'm believing this. And I'm praying these things into reality. And we speak these things in the spiritual realm. And that is how you pray a life full of power. And this is how we live in the divine nature. He's already given you all things. His divine power has granted us (laughs) everything we need, all things that pertain to life and godliness. Friends, as we close just this moment, I wonder what areas of your life you have just said no for God. And you have accepted your lot in life. You've said, this is just the way it is. I'm always gonna struggle with that thing in my mind. I'm I'm always gonna have that that, that, that hurt in me. I'm always gonna be angry at that person. I'm always gonna struggle with this addiction. I'm always gonna be a little bit broken in this area of my life. I'm always gonna be single. The business is never really gonna take off. I'm always gonna be in debt. I'm always gonna struggle. I believe right now, friends, we have the ability to bring the will of God into our life that his will will be done. His kingdom would come. Where's it coming from? The spiritual realm into our reality, the collision of heaven and earth. But it begins with prayer. I'm gonna pray for you right now. And I believe that there's something that can unlock in your life. I'm gonna pray for the Holy Spirit to fill you. And I'm gonna pray that that whatever area of your life feels like there is a limit on it, feels like there is a lid on it, we're gonna break it open right now and you're gonna be free. But I want you to, when this happens, I want you to understand that you are gonna go into a life of prayer. You are gonna go into a life of submission to Christ. You are gonna follow Him wholeheartedly because why would you not? The divine nature is there for us to take a hold of us. We are new in Christ. There is no old, there is no looking back. Why would we wanna live in the Voxel when we got a Tesla? So Holy Spirit, I pray right now that you would fill every person. Fill them with your presence. Fill them with your power. God, I pray. God, permeate every part of their being. Fill them with your spirit. Anoint them. And I pray right now, God, whatever limits and lids and chains have been placed upon their life by the enemy, God, we break them right now. We agree in faith together. God, that your will will be done. We break every debt. We break every fear. We break every addiction right now. We declare it is a new day. We see the provision of God. We see jobs falling from heaven. We lift up our eyes to see and we say yes and we say amen today in the name of Jesus. And I pray God that you would create such a powerful culture in our church of prayer that we would learn to be reliant on you. Not reliant on ourselves, but God reliant on on your grace and your goodness. God, we are not God, but we, we are so grateful, God, that we share in the divine nature. We're so grateful that we we are made in your image and uh, we thank you so much so just take a moment wherever you are to say thank you Jesus for what he's done and who he is and uh, let's get into that culture of prayer in our lives thanks so much for tuning in today uh, this has been imposter syndrome uh, please share this message with someone in your world who needs encouraging who needs some hope right now we'll see you next week 
so much for watching today. You might like some of these videos over here or over here. Of course, hit subscribe. And we do actually have a weekly email list where we send out content that we think is encouraging and helpful. To jump on that, just head to the description below. We'll see you guys soon.